You're getting they, older, Brett. Yeah. Well, no. And, and they're just, getting suckier. Apple's just getting suckier. Apple, which I used to get super hyped about Apple's like press conferences and stuff like that. I get less and less hyped about them as time goes on. <laughs> but you're getting they, older, Brett. Yeah. Well, no. And, and they're just, getting suckier. Apple's just getting suckier. So they did announce a bunch of subscription services. They announced Apple News Plus, which was stupid. <clears throat> like literally ten dollars a month for a subscription service to read news. It's like really, really okay. That's weird. I mean, they're already trying to. No, that's just that is stupid. Yeah. But what they did announce that's kind of interesting is the Apple Arcade. So this is a subscription service that'll allow its subscribers to download and play premium games for a single fee. So it's going to be nine ninety nine. Um, these are games that are playable on iOS, Mac OS, and the Apple TV. And they can also be played online. It's not a cloud streaming service. Instead, it's their version of a G- Xbox Game Pass, letting you download and play these games as long as you're subscribed to the service. Um, so they have some big publishers and developers on there, such as Sega, Platinum Games, Devolver Digital, Annapurna, and Konami. Um, even uh, Hironobu Sagaguchi, who has worked on the Final Fantasy series, will feature his upcoming game Fantasian on the platform. Um, but there will be 100 exclusives at launch, and the new games added regularly, but it's unclear how often or when those will happen. So... Their uh, premium games are not free to play, and subscribing to the arcade will give you the full versions, including any updates or DLC that come out for it. It's an interesting idea, but my concern with Apple doing taking this pathway is that they had the Apple TV and really pushed heavily on like the fact that it's a gaming. It can be used for gaming, and I never, after the first couple of months, like really considered it much of anything for gaming. Like they never really pushed that forward very well. And now they have a subscription service and like the iOS, like the iPhone and stuff like that is good for gaming, but I won't see myself pulling out my laptop to play a subscription service of games, especially for $10 a month. Right. Unless there's some pretty hot, like if they pull in like freaking Doom Eternal on here and that comes out in the service, like, yeah, maybe I'll consider it. But I feel like it's going to be a lot of um, B games right, and or (laughs) indie games, which could be cool. I think a lot of the, a lot of the, the platforms now are just overall like you have PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, you know, Epic Game Store now, I guess. And it's like they have their own like variation of like stuff you can play on and, and certain exclusivity exclusivity things. And, and I see where Apple's trying to go to, but I feel like maybe market it more towards kids because that's who will actually play this because people like us, like older people and maybe even some teenagers – like we kind of already found our platforms that we want to play on, and I don't think they're going to change that much because um, this isn't anything new. And yeah, the, the games are kind of might be kind of cool. Like and they're going to have Overland on there, which is an awesome game by Finji that we have some interviews on over at our YouTube channel. Uh, search the Inner Gamer, and I don't know. Like I'd rather play Overland on the Switch, which it will be on, or like my PC or something. I mean, I agree. I wouldn't want to play this on my... I mean, it's kind of cool that you could put it on your TV, but, like, what are the controllers? Like, you just have to use the remote, right? The little, yeah. The laptop I mean, they, you, can get, you can get controllers for it, but... But then that's another peripheral that yeah. you have to buy on top of that. You know, if they wanted to market this as a gaming something, they should ship every Apple TV with some kind of gaming controller. Like what... Project Stadia is doing, or exactly. Google Stadia is doing. Right. I think that was a smart move on their part because they made a controller it, that right. looks and hopefully will feel good. And if you have it, you you might be more inclined to be like, well, let me just try it out, you know, right. see how it goes. But if you have to buy another peripheral, I think most people who get an Apple TV they aren't going to play games on the Apple TV. Right. They just want to stream stuff. Yeah. Because either they're not a gamer and they don't need a gaming console that has streaming stuff, or they already have a gaming device or platform that they already play on. Yeah. So, and I'm sure we're not really going to miss out on any of these games anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's weird. I mean, the timing is so bad. It could not yeah. be worse oh, because yeah. you got Steam now, you got Discord, you have, you know, the Humble Bundle stuff that's still out there. You got the Epic Game Store, like all these things that are entering the market all at the same time. Xbox right. Game Pass, right. PS4 pushing on their stuff more, like Stadia. Everybody I mean, in Stadia, like it's just it's such we're, a wrong we're, we're time. We're being torn too much between each other. I think having the trifecta of consoles is good, and then having the PC it kind of out by itself. Right, it's like the perfect mesh of gaming. At least for me, obviously that's how we grew up. So anyone younger probably can get in anything. That's why I'm like, you should just probably market this towards kids and adults that have kids. 
Yeah. And I think they'd be more successful that way. Yeah. I mean, that's why you have kids playing phone, phone games so, so much. Yeah. I think that's a demographic. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that'd be a brilliant audience for them. Yeah. Cause $10 a month for my kid who's already playing on their iPad all day long. They're not going to have to sit there and spend $2 every five seconds on microtransactions and bullshit. That's another thing too, is no microtransactions in these games you're playing a subscription for. Perfect. That would be bullshit. Perfect. Um, or like at least get like some free credits each month or something like that that goes towards it in some capacity. Right. But yeah, take that away because then your parent will know like, okay, yeah, I'm paying you $10. I'm paying $10 a month for this. Play whatever the hell you want, but you can only play on this thing. Don't come ask me for money. Every day. Exactly. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're going to have a handful of games. So don't. Yeah. And then these kids will be emailing Apple and be like, my mom won't let me play this game because it's not on the service. Can you add it for the service? And they'll be like, nope, sorry. Now they have a handful of games that are like mind blowingly good and bring something new to the game sphere. I don't see this really taking off. Yeah. So at least not from adults. Yeah. I'm sure there's a few. There's a few who play it, but not yeah. enough. I mean, if the Switch hadn't come out and like they brought the service out and all the indie games I've wanted to play on Steam came out on this, I'd be okay with that in a way. But then again, I don't want to play all those games I play indie right. on a touchscreen. I want right. to play it on a Switch with controllers. Exactly. 